Welcome to Take Another Five, your weekly podcast on a bit of this and a bit of that. Hosted by Donna J. Jodhan. Hi there, it's Donna J. Jodhan, and welcome to my weekly podcast, Take Another Five. I live in Toronto, Canada, and I'm an author, blogger, writer, editor, entrepreneur, and law student. And you know what? I thoroughly enjoy doing what I do for a living. I hope you do too. We'd like to welcome you to take another five for yet another week and hope that you're having a terrific day thus far. You know, we got a question for you to start things off, and here is our question of the day. Which is one of your favorite non-alcoholic drinks? Is it fruit juice, milk, chocolate milk, water, plain old water, or could it be one of those many soft drinks out there? Coke, Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, 7-Up, Ginger Ale, anything like that. Sprite, or it could be just sparkling water or sparkling grape juice. So could it be a sparkling drink or a soft drink? Or like I said, could it be milk or chocolate milk? Mm -mm -mm. Think about it and let us know. Send us your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Take Another Five is made up of five specific segments. First, we have the Kitchen Corner, where we get cooking and we give you recipes every week to help you if you find yourself in an emergency crunch or in a time crunch or you just don't know what to cook for yourself or the family and you're looking for something quick and easy to cook. That's our Kitchen Corner. The next is Take Another Five with Technology, and here we talk about all kinds of technology. Anything ranging from an app to what we call lower level technology. Next comes the Five Minutes Mystery segment, and here we give you a mystery every week for you to just relax, recharge, allow your imagination to roam and try and solve our mystery. It's all about solving the problem and it's called audio comfort food. It's a must listen to. Next we have in the end zone with the entrepreneur where we give you weekly tips for entrepreneurs or potential entrepreneurs or those who just are thinking about it. And finally, our fifth segment is called Staying Ahead of Bullies and Scams. Alright then, it's now time for us to wrap up the mystery of last week and to tell you who did it and how it was done. Remember now, this was called The Kidnapper's Kid and it all had to do with poor old Greg Nepean who was killed by someone and his two young sons and his housekeeper were missing along with the um, family's SUV. So let's tell you who did it and we hope that you came close to deciding who did it. Eldon Holt and Greg Nepean shared a past. On a pleasant summer's day Eldon had watched as Greg had lured or lured Jensen away from his home. A few months before this, Greg had lost his wife and younger son Jensen in a car accident. His older son Galen had become inconsolable. Greg had become very concerned for Galen's well-being and he had determined that he had to find a new brother for Galen. 
Galen and Jensen were inseparable before the car accident. Greg knew that it would take a long or he knew, sorry, that it would take long for him to adopt a brother for Galen, so he took matters into his own hands. Hmm. Greg did not have too much difficulty in finding what he sought. One day, as he was driving in his neighborhood, he saw Jensen playing on his front lawn. He loved the little boy immediately and spent the next few weeks observing him. He went to great lengths to find out as much as he could about the little boy. He found out his name and who his parents were. Then one day he made his move. He found out that Jensen's parents were going out of town on business. Jensen was going to be looked after by his nanny. Greg waited until the parents had left town, and on this summer's day, Greg parked his car around the corner from Jensen's home, and then, as he walked towards the house, he made a phone call. He had pre-recorded the message and had used a throwaway cell phone to make the call. When the Nancy answered, Greg walked quickly to the front lawn, and there he found little Jensen playing. The rest was easy for Greg. He strode easily towards the little boy, and with a huge smile on his face, he had dressed in clothes that very closely rep resembled those of a postman, and he had told Jensen that he had had a package for him from his parents. Jensen believed easily because he thought that Greg was indeed a postman, and they had walked quickly towards Greg's parked car. Greg opened the trunk and showed Jensen a brand new tricycle, and the rest was history. Eldon Holt had watched as Greg had opened the passenger door to his car and had put Jensen into the car. He did not think much of the incident until a few years later. He was leaving through a magazine when he came across a picture of Greg and his boys. They were featured in a cover story in a society magazine. Eldon knew that Jensen's parents had lost their son to a kidnapping incident, and Eldon had then hatched his own plan. He did not have much difficulty finding out where Greg and his sons lived. He tried to blackmail Greg for big bucks. He became angry when Greg had refused to pay up. So he killed Greg. Eldon Holt was the one who killed Greg. We hope you enjoyed The Kidnapper's Kid and we hope you came close if not that you were able to solve this mystery. Now, it's time for us to go on to our first segment of Take Another Five. But if you'd like to purchase this mystery or any other mysteries written by author Donna Jodhan, please go to www.donnajodhan.com and visit our online store. Now it's time for segment one and we'll catch you on the other side. Welcome to my kitchen corner. Hi, it's Donna Jill Jodhan, and welcome to segment one of Take Another Five. 
We're now in our kitchen corner, and it's time for us to get cooking. But first, we'd like to thank our good friend Mama Peach for having provided us with tons and tons of great recipes from her library. She generously shares these recipes with any and everyone. And they are terrific recipes for any time of the day and on any occasion. So, without much more ado, let's get cooking. All right, then. Let's see what we've got in store for you this week. And this first recipe comes from the Satoos and Chowders category. And it's chicken and vegetable chowder. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. One pound of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And you cut them into one inch pieces. One can, about 14 in ounces of chicken broth. One can of it's a 10 ounce can, 10 and 3 quarter ounce can of condensed cream of potato soup, undulated, or yeah, undulated. One package, about 10 ounces of frozen broccoli florets, and you've got to thaw these. One cup of sliced carrots. One jar, four and a half ounces about, of sliced mushrooms, and you've got to drain these. One half cup of chopped onion. One half cup of corn. Two cloves of garlic, and you've got to mince these. One half teaspoon of dried thyme. One third cup of half and half combined chicken that oh let me start again one cup or one third cup half and half combine your chicken broth soup broccoli carrots mushrooms onion and corn garlic and thyme into your crock pot mix well, cover and cook on low for five to six hours. Stir half and half into crock pot. Turn crock pot to high. Cover, cook for 15 minutes or until heated through. Variation, add one and a half cup to two ounces okay of shredded Swiss's Swiss cheese or cheddar cheese just before serving and stirring over the low heat until melted this makes six servings now if you have any difficulty following this recipe or any other recipes that we have given you over the past weeks please do not hesitate to write to us at info at sterlingcreations.ca and we'd be happy to send you an electronic copy of any of these recipes. We're not quite done as yet because we have another recipe for you for this week. And this comes out of the soups category. It's beef, lentil and onion soup. All right, non-stick cooking spray, three-quarter pound of cubed beef, stewed meat, two cups of chopped carrots, one cup of sliced celery, one cup of uncooked lentils, Two teaspoons of dried thyme, one quarter teaspoon of black pepper, one eighth teaspoon of salt, 
three quarter cups of water, one can, about 10 ounces or 10 and a half ounces of condensed French onion soup, undulated. Spray lard skillet with cooking spray. Heat skillet over medium to high heat. Add your beef. Cook until browned brown on all sides. Next, you space the carrots, celery, and lentils in the crock pot. Top with beef. Sprinkle with thyme, pepper, and salt. Pour water and soup over this mixture. Cover. Cook on low from 7 to 8 hours or for 7 to 8 hours. Or you can cook on high for 3 and a half to 4 hours. Or until meat and lentils are nice and tender. This makes four servings. Okay, these are our recipes for this week. And again, you can write to us at info at sterlingcreations.ca and we'd be happy to send you electronic copies of these recipes or any others that we have brought to you over the weeks. All right, it's time for us to move on to segment two, take another five with technology, and we'll catch you on the other side. Time to take another five with technology. Hi again, it's Donna Jill Jodhan, and welcome to segment two of Take Another Five. And guess what? We have arrived at Take Another Five with technology. And in this segment, we try to mix things up a little bit by presenting you with a mixture or a combination of lower level technology and then the higher level technology. So we bring you a little something from either end of the spectrum. And for this week, we're going to start off by introducing you to the talking watch. Yes, they do indeed exist. And if you know someone who is blind or visually impaired, or you yourself are blind or visually impaired, then this could be the perfect gift for them. I am a great advocate of the talking watch and it may be it may not be for everyone but but for those who do not know braille or would prefer to hear the time announced out loud then this is the perfect product for you mhm mm the talking watch comes in all sizes and in all styles. Several manufacturers have put out their own versions of the talking watch. There are watches for the man, talking watches for the lady, and talking watches for the sporty one. Yes, the talking watch is what I call a sort of backup device for you to tell the time. It is portable, of course, and most talking watches have an alarm setting on them. So go out there and make friends with the talking watch. And where could you buy this talking watch? You can go to either of these two online, uh, shop, uh, online shopping centers, as I call them, www.independentlivingaids.com or www.maxiaids.com and MaxiAids is spelled M-A-X-I-A-I-D-S Independent Living Aids is one long word independent 
I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T, living, L-I-V-I-N-G, AIDS, A-I-D-S. So again, you can purchase this, these watches at www.maxiaids.com or www.independentlivingaids.com. Right then, it's time for us to go on to our next um, item in our segment here. And we are going to go to an app. This one is called Meet, or it's not really an app, but I wanted to introduce you to this because we feel that it's really interesting for you to hear about this. It's called the Touch Fire Keyboard for I P iPads, sorry. And believe it or not, it starts at only $39.99. You can learn more by going to https slash slash and just pay attention here a z six eight six four five two dot v o dot m s e c n d dot net again http https colon slash slash z six eight six four five two dot v o dot m s e c n d dot net s oh this is a very long um url and if you'd like to know more about this app or about this product sorry why not write to us at info at sterlingcreations.ca because I would not like you to lose track of these URLs that, you know, that are associated with this app or this product. I keep saying app, but it's a product. Okay. Let's see now. Sorry about that. This keyboard is beautiful, grippy, outer layer, and it keeps your iPad firmly in hand. It is tough, shock absorbent inner layer, works like a bicycle helmet, strong magnetic latch, holds your iPad firmly closed when on the go. The productivity of this um, keyboard, it's the world's thinnest and lightest keyboard, magnetically attaches and adds patented 3 D keys over your iPad's on-screen keyboard. Now you can feel the keys and quickly type without looking at the screen. Hmm. The comfort of this keyboard over a dozen ergonomic viewing and typing positions reduces neck strain and screen glare. Keyboard stores magnetically in the cover when not in use. No batteries, no Bluetooth hassles. Isn't that great? I would like one of these. So, this may sound a bit disjointed to you, but 
I think the best thing here is for us to talk a bit more about it and let's go on and we apologize. The mounting of this keyboard is as follows. Built-in magnetic mount keeps your iPad easily accessible, but not in the way. It can hang on your fridge or on a file cabinet. The adhesive wall mount lets you attach your iPad anywhere. Isn't that great? So, the sound of this keypad, no more cupping your hand over your iPad's speakers. The Touchfire keypad keyboard has a built-in speaker cabinet that redirects the sound to the front of the iPad, increasing volume by 50%. Hmm. Over 75,000 happy customers. So maybe it's time for you to go out there and investigate this Touchfire keyboard. Sorry if we're a bit disjointed in this uh, particular um, part of segment two. It's just that there are a lot of URLs that have been given to us with this particular um, uh, product and I think the best we can do for you this week is to ask you to write to us if you'd like to learn more about the Touchfire um, keyboard. So write to us at www.sterlingcreations. Sorry, write to us at info at sterlingcreations.ca. Okay, that's info at sterlingcreations.ca. All right then, we again apologize for this. And it's time now for us to go on to segment three of Take Another Five. We'll catch you on the other side. It's Donna Jill Jodhan, and we again apologize for a little stumbling in segment two. Now, things happen from time to time, but anyway, we're here at segment three of Take Another Five. Five minutes mystery moment. And this one is called Supper at the Seaside. You know, we've been writing audio mysteries and recording it in our own voice since 2010. Our audio mysteries have been broadcast across the ACB Internet Radio Network and at Accessible Media Inc. here in Toronto. We've also hosted several murder mystery evenings and court session evenings. And we are so enjoying what we do, and we hope that you are enjoying listening to these mysteries. And if you'd like to learn more about these mysteries, just don't hesitate to visit www.donnachodhan.com and go to our online store. All right, it's time for this week's mystery, Supper at the Seaside. Good enough. Eight board members have been found dead at a posh hotel. They had all been there for an annual board meeting, but no one made it out alive. And those responsible made sure or made very sure of that. The question is, who could have engineered such a heinous crime, and why? What could have driven anyone to have done this? Could this have been an inside job? 
let's go to the scene of the crime. So get ready. A midsummer's evening it is at around 10 p.m. Outside, the waves are rolling gently towards the sandy shore. Pleasure boats are cruising silently further out to sea. Some are anchored for the night, and the best Britannica hotel sits on two acres of well-manicured grounds. It has its own private beach, and the top floor has been rented out for a special occasion. Eight of the suites are occupied. A very posh dining room overlooking the sea was silent when crime scene specialists entered. The lights were turned low and soft music was playing in the background. Ceiling fans turned noiselessly overhead. A wet bar stood in one corner of the room and there was one long table covered with a very expensive tablecloth. There were eight high back chairs around the table. Eight corpses sat upright around the table. And varying stages of unfinished peach cobbler lay in front of each of the corpse. Half empty coffee cups were also in evidence. There was no staff in attendance. My goodness. What could the motives have been for this really horrendous scene? Well, revenge in return for loss of life? Savings and investments lost? What could it be? Who were some of the suspects? Matt McFadden? He had lost his life savings and could not pay for his wife's cancer treatment, and she had passed on. Timothy Shoemaker had lost all of his retirement savings, and he had been downsized and had been forced to find another job, and he had had huge debts to pay. Aaron Hennessy was a single mom, had to close down her business because she had lost her investments and she had had to mortgage her home. She could not even afford to send her kids to college and she was forced to borrow heavily to stay afloat. And then there is Marianne Litsky. She had lost all of her investments and her husband had recently passed on. She had medical bills to pay for him, had kids to look after, and she was a single mom who had lost her home due to delinquent mortgage payments. The cause of death was as follows. All eight persons had died of food poisoning. Poison had been placed in their appetizers and desserts. Appetizers were shrimp cocktails. Desserts were peach cobblers. Death was slow and painful. All deaths had taken place within a space of about half of an hour. The eight bodies found were all well known board members of a very high profile financial institution. Chris Holland, Larry Heston, Scott Brunner, Pete Gardiner, Brett Danico, Laura Platts, Janine Rybonski, and Dorothy Lynn were all, these were all of the 
board members. The board met at this specific location annually. It was a highly publicized meeting and several important company policies were developed at this annual meeting. These policies were usually announced at the conclusion of the meeting. A big press conference was held, a huge fanfare was made, and three additional board members were supposed to have attended, but did not. Rick Gallagher had just had, 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 just had surgery and was unable to travel. Keith Sopple was out of the country on company business, and Kathleen Moran was off on maternity leave. For the past two years, the company had been under investigation. It had run into some well-publicized financial difficulties. Some officials were being accused of embezzlement. Others were being accused of financial wrongdoing and several investors had lost much, if not all, of their investments. This company was teetering on bankruptcy. Some investment holders had just launched a class action lawsuit and others had openly threatened various, various executives with lawsuits. Others had pulled their money out of the company. Keith Supple had deliberately left on company business at this time. He did not want to attend the board meeting. He did not like how the company was treating its investors. He had met with the board, or he had, so let me start, he had met with the four who had threatened to let me, oh jeez he had met with the four who had threatened executives he had become suspicious of company wrongdoings he had begun to gather proof and someone had started to blackmail him in turn hmm Rick Gallagher had scheduled his surgery for this specific time and he had met with two of those who had made threats, Matt McFadden and Timothy Shoemaker. So these two were, were, were dead now. Okay. He too had become suspicious and someone in the company had threatened him. He wanted no part of the company's cover-ups. Kathleen Moran had met with Aaron Hennessy and Marianne Litsky. She had wanted to understand their cases in more detail. She had uncovered some shady dealings and she had become fearful for her well-being. She was now getting ready to resign from the board and from the company. So, you know, let me just try to clarify all of this again, okay? We have eight board members who were found dead, and we have others who were suspicious of these eight and who had tried to uncover certain things, but they were being threatened in return. Sort of a very confusing mystery, but you know, this is an impetus for you to go to www.donnajohnhen.com, visit our online store, and uh, see if you would like to download this mystery. But don't give up as yet, folks. We will have more um, detail for you at the end of this podcast. All right, it's time for us to move along to segment four, and we'll catch you on the other side. In the end zone with the entrepreneur. 
Hey again, it's Donna Jill John Hen, and welcome to segment four of Take Another Five for this week. And we have now arrived at In the End Zone with the Entrepreneur, and that's me. I've been an entrepreneur since 1998, and I've seen a lot of changes take place over this time. When I first started out, business cards and printed advertising was the order of the day. But today, we've got social media, we've got the internet, and we've got so much more to help us with what we want to go and where we want to go. So many more tools to put into our toolkit, as they would say. All right, then. Our tip for this week has, is this. Is there such a thing as an international entrepreneur? Well, I would say definitely so. One should never, ever limit their horizon to the domestic scene. There are lots of entrepreneurial opportunities for the international entrepreneur. They can do such things as export products, add services to import products, and sell them on the domestic market. Or they can act as an agent for an international company. Or they can act as an international representative. They can do such things as translations and transcriptions. We would say that an entre international entrepreneur can find limitless opportunities. It doesn't take much. Just put on one's thinking cap and think of it this way. You either export or you import. And if you export, you do so by exporting services or products to countries that need them. And if you import, you import products and services that are needed in the marketplace where you are. So, is it possible to be an international entrepreneur? We say definitely so, and you've got to investigate this. So, this is our tip for this week from In the End Zone with the Entrepreneur. And remember, just write to us at info at sterlingcreations.ca and we would be more than happy to provide you with any feedback or information that you seek. Time now for us to move on to segment five, which is staying ahead of bullies and scams, and we'll catch you on the other side. Help us beat the bullies and the scams. Hi again, it's Donna Jill Chodhan, and I can't believe we're now up to segment five of Take Another Five for this week. My, 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 time does go by when you're having a good time. Hmm. So, we're here at segment five, and our segment is titled Staying Ahead of Bullies and Scams. And for this week, we're going to start you off with a very common scam that is making the rounds and it is this you are being offered a service package by a cable and TV provider you receive a phone call with a terrific offer that you can't simply believe a bundle that includes TV cable and internet and even cell phone services as an add-on. Rates are really enticing. Bundles are flexible and for a good long period of time. Do not, do not encourage this phone call. Hang up and go about your business. Forget you ever heard this phone call because you know what? It's a scam. There is no way 
that any company could offer these types of services for that price that they're telling you all about. Because if they did, they'd go bankrupt in a hurry. So, ignore it and move on. Hang up and go about your business. All right, it's on to part two of segment five. And it's all about building awareness about bullying. And it has to do with taking responsibility. I do not think that throwing up our hands in despair each time an incident of bullying is made known to us will do the trick. Nor do we believe that each time someone is bullied or that each time someone bullies another, it is enough for us to blame someone else. No. It is time for us to take responsibility for bullying in our society. We are the ones who set the examples for our kids. They look up to us. They look to us for guidance and advice. And they depend on us to show them the way. This is a sober fact of life. And there is no getting away from this. What can we do to become shining examples to our kids? There is a lot that we can do. And I know that we are doing our part to help. Okay? I invite you now to go to www.donnajohnhen.com and check out our bullying page and see how you could become a member of our campaign against bullying. Please help us stop bullying. Right then, we are at the end of segment five and it's time for the wrap up to this week's podcast, Take Another Five. So we'll catch you on the other side. Thank you for having taken another five. We wish you a fantastic day. Hey, it's Donna Jill Jodhan, and we are at the end of our podcast. Take another five for yet another week. Another week is in the books, but before we leave you, we got to give you some more facts to help you solve this week's mystery, Supper at the Seaside. The three missing board members had shared their reports with each other. One of them was absolutely outraged after having heard everything and they had determined to do something to help. They chose the one who was the most willing to be their partner. The board member in question had also been a victim. They had refused to go along with illegal company schemes, and they had been threatened. Some of their accounts had even been frozen. Both parties had agreed and the board member provided the relevant info. That or those are additional facts that you can use to help you solve this mystery. What you need to do here is to identify which of the three board members that were missing, which of the three that were not killed had teamed up with which of those identified as suspects to do the dirty work. All right then, folks, we're at the end of another week. We wish you a terrific day and an even better week. We want to thank you for all of your feedback because it is only with you and through you that we can make our podcast happen every week. You can follow us at Accessible World or at author underscore Jodhan. You can follow us at these two um, handles on Twitter 
or like us at author Donna Jodhan or just Donna Jodhan. Okay, so you can follow us on Twitter at Accessible World or at author underscore Jodhan or like us on Facebook at author Donna Jodhan.